Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and today we're going to be going over a guide to cooking in Icarus. We're going to cover what are the best general foods to use, what are the best high-end foods to use, and what are the foods that are just kind of honorable mentions that have some unique characteristics that might be useful to you. We're also going to talk about some unique interactions with them, so with all that being said, let's get started. Now we're going to start out over here at the campfire, or in this case the fireplace, because they both actually cook the exact same thing. So what are the foods we want to talk about here? First one we want to mention is obviously cooked meat. If you didn't know, cooked meat will restore some of your health. It's one of the easiest foods to get in the game. You kill any animal and it will give you 20 instant HP as well as 20% health regen. That's nothing to scoff at. It has saved my life many times. It also will increase your max HP. So the most generic food that you should always keep an eye out for is just cooked meat. Just grab it, take it home, throw it in the campfire, throw it in a fireplace. It's worth having around the health regen and with it being one of the only items in the game that can instantly give you HP makes it extremely useful. Next is cooked fish. Cooked fish is also extremely useful, which I'm going to get into in a minute, so we're just going to skip that one for now, as well as flatbread. If you didn't know, you can't actually melt ice inside a campfire or a fireplace in order to fill up your water container. Just put both in the campfire or fireplace and they will start filling up. Next up is the spoiled meat. Make sure you're taking this out of your campfire before it gets cooked. It's pretty low on the priority list, but make sure you take it out. That way you can create poison and arrows or use it for something else. There is no reason to leave it in there and let it turn into charcoal as one charcoal for one spoiled meat is a total waste. After that is prime meat, which yes, is very, very powerful. It gets you a ton of extra max HP. It gives you a ton of food. It gives you 30 instant HP. It also gives you stamina. But the reason we really don't care too much about it is because there's very few things that will drop prime meat in the game. And therefore we don't really care too much. Next up is your charred corn. This is kind of a secret underlier superfood here. And the reason for that is because it gives you 50 food. It's in wide abundance and easy to get a lot of. And it comes with plus 75 max stamina as well as minus 10% consumed by actions. Corn is kind of a sleeper of a food. It's actually pretty good and people don't give it enough credit. It gives you 50 food when consumed. You can find it in abundance and in one little area that could have 40, 50, 60, even 100 corn. So that'll feed you for a long time. As well as 75 max stamina increase for its buff and minus 10% stamina consumed by actions. The reason we care about stamina reduction from actions is because that means mining, gathering trees, that means sprinting, that means using a bow, anything that consumes stamina will be taken down by 10%, so you consume 10% less, which means every 10 actions you do, you could do 10% more, you could sprint 10% farther per stamina bar. It starts to make a big difference when we get into some of the combo foods, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. Next is the grilled pumpkin. Again, this is just kind of a generic food, not a lot to talk about. The only unique thing to even mention is that generic pumpkins give you some exposure resistance, which generally speaking does not matter. After that is the roast squash. Again, nothing to mention here. It gives you some melee damage, whatever. We got the barbecue carrot, which is actually a surprisingly good food early game. If you don't want to spend a lot of time building up to some of the higher tier foods, this one can be really useful if you're just going to do a bow run because that 5% extra damage when you're fighting some of the bosses or you're taking on a bear can actually save you one or two arrows and kill it just that little bit faster, which might end up saving your life. Mushrooms are not in the game, so we're just going to skip anything related to mushrooms going forward just so you guys know that. Now as far as all the teas and the cocoa and the coffees go, I generally just stay away from these and my reasoning for that is simply because it's so hard to get 50 of them and make a thermos. They're just not worth the pain. If you really really are desperate you could I guess go ahead and make like hot cocoa to survive the cold environment but the minus 25% food consumption or water consumption or whatever for 900 seconds is just not worth it. Personally I would stay away from all the teas, cocos, and coffees as they're just not worth your time. Now the next bench you're most likely to have is going to be the cooking station. Now if we open this up there are a few worthy mentions here and we have fruit salad yummy yummy as we all know it is just kind of useful because of the fact that it only takes one watermelon and one wild berry. 
Yes, you get negative oxygen consumption. Yes, you get negative water consumption. But if you have the exotics or you have a big oxygen tank or a big water bottle, those really don't matter. The reason it's worth mentioning is because it gives both health and stamina, and it's one of the first foods to do that in a single buff. Now, it's also worth mentioning that watermelons in of themselves are actually extremely powerful early on. So what you want to do is if you see a watermelon on the ground, grab it and consume one for the buff as it's a pretty big stamina buff for you to have when you're first starting out on a map. Now, following that in the cooking station, we still have a few more, which is the wild salad. This is the biggest stamina buff we currently have available if this is the only station you've gotten to, meaning not in the entire game, but up until this stage where you've gotten the cooking station. It's 150 max stamina, 10% exposure resistance, which personally I don't care about. It's very rarely useful, and 10% melee damage, which again is very rarely useful. So what we care about here is that 150 max stamina, which can be extremely useful when you're trying to run those long distances or you have to knife a ton of times when you're fighting an animal. The one we want to mention after that is going to be creamed corn. Creamed corn does take water so if you didn't know you just need to go ahead and put your water bottle in here for anything here on out that takes water. We'll put it in the station and you'll be able to craft it. Creamed corn takes one animal fat which is just made from a raw meat nothing special and one corn which like we said we can find in abundance. If you have this station it's better to do this than to grill your corn in most cases so I do recommend you do it. It does the same thing a grilled corn does with the 75 max stamina and 10% stamina consumed by action reduction, but it also gives you 150 max HP. So this is literally just the charred corn, but better in basically every way by simply adding one raw animal meat to it. It's also worth mentioning that raw meat doesn't decay if you turn it into animal fat. So if you have a ton of extra raw meat and you don't want to have to refrigerate it or deal with it, just turn it into some animal fat and use it in some creamed corn or other recipes later because animal fat actually does not disappear. It doesn't have a decay timer. It will stay around forever. Now we have the potbelly stove, which is generally not the best cooking station. And that's in part because you have to leave room for it to have a chimney. You can kind of make it work, but personally, I just don't like to have to deal with it. However, if you do end up making it, it does have some worthy mentions for its recipes. You have sweet corn soup, which gives you the exact same things as charred corn again, but minus 20% stamina consumed by actions instead of 10% for simply adding water. There's no reason not to make this one if you have corn and you happen to have a stove. It takes literally just a few seconds and it's just simply better than charred corn, so there's really no reason not to do it. Now, the mushroom soup, the stew, and the soybean stir fry are all currently not actually usable, and that's because we can't find mushrooms for the life of us. If by some chance you're watching this in the future and mushrooms are starting to spawn, that's great. These could be useful in a lot of different ways, but we're just not going to talk about them today because currently mushrooms are unobtainable. Following that is the fish curry. Fish curry is actually super good if you're near a lake. Soybeans are very easy to find out in the world. They just look like bushes. Fish, you simply jump in a lake and knife some fishes, or you shoot a bow, use a gun, whatever the heck you want to do. Fish are very easy to get. I know I said fishes, forgive me for that. But anyways, fish curry is a useful thing because it takes one raw meat, one raw fish, and a soybean for 225 max HP. This is the best HP buff we've gotten up into this crafting station, and it can help a lot. You also get the 10% health regen and 10% stamina regen. It's worth mentioning just because of those alone. So if you're going to do something and you have some extra resources laying around, maybe you're near a lake, go get a couple fish, kill a deer, and get some soybeans. You've got some pretty beefy food in case you're worried about dying to animals or worrying about fighting a boss in the near future, this is definitely going to be one of the foods you want to go with. Following that is roast vegetables. This is the opposite, which is you're going to need a pumpkin, a squash, and a carrot, which can be a bit of a pain to find. Personally, I struggle to find squash. I do find pumpkins all the time. Maybe it's just because they stand out, and I do find carrots as well. But squash tend to be a bit of a pain. I would honestly say, unless you happen to have all these resources laying around, I would generally just skip it because there's better things you can turn all these resources into. Now, real quick, we did skip the herbalism bench. The herbalism bench does have one cooking recipe, and that is flatbread dough. Flatbread dough is how you make flatbread, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, so I don't want to get into that. So we're going to talk about that at the end of the video when we talk about some of the best combos for food. But if you're wondering where to make it, you make it at the herbalism bench. 
Alrighty, now we're at the final kitchen station, which is the biofuel stove in Kitchen Bench. The biofuel stove has a few different recipes worth mentioning. If you've actually gotten all the way up to this thing, you're probably going ahead and making guns, so I doubt food's a big concern, but if you're trying to grind XP, there's some good XP foods in here. Bread is very easy to make. All you need is some bread dough, which is made over here at the kitchen bench with water, flour, and yeast. If you don't know how to make flour, simply shove some wheat inside a mortar and pestle and turn it into flour. You do have to have the recipe for that, but regular bread is very useful for the XP buff. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the XP buff build if we're trying to go for only XP foods here in just a minute. All you need to do is make that dough, cook it inside the stove. Don't forget you do need to have a biofuel can in there that actually has fuel, unlike what we have right here, which is no fuel, in order to cook in this thing. Now, bread, like I said, is very good. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's got the XP bonus of 10%, which is what we care about, which we're gonna talk about again here in just a second. We can cook our prime meat here, which we can do literally everywhere else. Don't know why it needed to be in this bench. After that, you have fruit pie. Fruit pie is gonna take a pastry, which we'll go jump back over to the kitchen bench again a pastry is going to take water one animal meat to make the animal fat and one flour they're very cheap they're not hard to make at all flour is super easy to come by and so is one meat fruit pie is okay it's better than making fruit salad it's literally just a better version of it personally i don't like to make it because the oxygen and water consumption negative effects that give you negative 15 percent oxygen consumption and water consumption just aren't good enough to warrant crafting it. The max health and max stamina, once again, are the same problem. At this tier of crafting food recipes, they're generally not worth including these ingredients in them. So personally, I would stay away from the fruit pie recipe altogether. After that is meat pie, which requires mushrooms, so we can't make it and we're just gonna skip it. And then you have vegetable pie. Vegetable pie is a little bit better, and that's because corn is easy to get, pastry is easy to get and soybeans are easy to get if you can find squash and you happen to have some laying around this is a great use for them as you can turn them into 150 max hp 150 max stamina minus 15 percent stamina consumed by actions and some increased melee damage which we don't care about as well as 10 percent xp in general this is a pretty good food in general, but again, it's not really a super food to me. It doesn't stand out in any one area. It's just kind of a good generalized buff to have. Now, moving on to what I would consider a super food is pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread is just one bread dough and one pumpkin. Bread dough is very easy to make, as we just talked about, and you need a single pumpkin. Pumpkin bread does also not decay after you cook it. So once you make it into pumpkin bread, it won't decay. I think this could be a bug, I'm not sure. Hopefully it gets fixed if it is, if it isn't, We'll just use it to our advantage. So you get 150 max stamina, which is okay at this point. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's definitely not bad either. You get some exposure resistance, which, eh, whatever. But it also gives you 15% experience gained. So if you want to go on an XP grind, this is going to be on your list to make. They're very useful for that purpose. If you're not using it for the XP purpose, it's, eh, it's basically just bread with a little more XP gain and a little more stamina. However, when we stack these together, you're now getting 25% XP for some very cheap recipes. You can also use another thing which we're gonna talk about here in just a second. Following that is the crumbed fish filet. Crumbed fish filet is good because all you need is a raw fish, animal fat, and bread dough to get it. That means you're gonna get 150 max HP, 75 max stamina, 15% stamina regen, which is very important and we'll talk about here in a second, as well as some XP gain. So if you do want to use this, it could be extremely useful for a number of different reasons, but at the end of the day, crumb fish filet is just a good generic all around recipe that is nice to have. Alrighty, now we get into what I like to call the powerhouses of the cooking world, and these are going to be made in the kitchen bench. We already have bread dough, which we talked about, which turns into bread. I'll go ahead and hop back over for you in case you forgot. Bread will give you 125 max stamina and 10% XP gain for a very cheap price. That matters a lot because it's cheap and it's easy to make you don't have to spend a lot of your time on your missions to do it you can quickly make it if you already have the bench and get yourself some free xp now what's more important 
are the alcoholic beverages in here. These things are awesome. They are very, very powerful and pretty cheap to make. To make a beer bottle or a wine bottle, I believe it's five glass, which is just five silicone smelted in the second tier furnace in order to give yourself 100% stamina regen. This will save you so much time when you're going on long runs for missions. This will also save you time while mining so you don't have to worry about running out of stamina nearly as often. And to top it off, it even gives you more max stamina. Your stamina bar can get pretty crazy in this game, but it is worth mentioning that wine over here, which instead takes a reed flower and some wild berries, while beer takes wheat and yeast, they are not going to stack. So if you drink a beer and then you drink a wine, they will not give you separate buffs. Just to give you an example over here, I'll go ahead and drink the wine. And you can see I have a little buff down there in the bottom right corner. But it's going to classify it as beer. This could be a bug, I don't know. So if I go ahead and I drink another beer... You can see it actually doesn't give me a different buff. They're just the same one. I think it should say alcohol or something because it's not clear that these two recipes actually are basically just the same thing made with different materials. If you didn't know, once again, if you need to make the bottles for them, you just come over here to the glass working bench where you can make your wine bottles, your beer bottles, and your glass jars. Next is berry jam and berry jam is important because of one very unique feature that it has you'll notice it takes a glass jar glass jars take both glass and iron to make and iron can be annoying to farm so if i were to craft one it would consume this jar and then turn it into a stackable item so if i consume this little thing of berry jam over here which is going to give me 125 stamina 20 percent negative water consumption and 10 percent shared xp it's not really that big of a deal but it's nice because of this specific feature when I consume it it gives me the jar back and that is what is good about it then you can take the jar and go ahead and craft another berry jam it's also worth mentioning that you get 40 food when consuming berry jam versus if we go over here in our fridge and we look at berries you're only going to actually get four food when it takes five berries to make a berry jam and it will no longer spoil when in this state this makes it very powerful because it doesn't spoil, it gives you double the food you would get from consuming berries, and takes up less buff slots to give you better buffs. The negative water consumption, again, not a big deal. Shared XP is nice, but it's just a cheap, cheap, cheap food that you can make to get yourself going if you happen to go ahead and make this crafting bench. Now the last food we're going to talk about individually is the pickled carrot. The pickled carrot will give you 150 max stamina, 20% projectile damage, and 20% shared XP. Shared XP is whatever, not that big of a deal. What we care about here is that projectile damage. Nothing else in the game gives that much bonus projectile damage aside from actual gear and weapons. So what you can do is actually make a pickled carrot, which is one carrot, one iron bar, and one silicone to give yourself this buff. This is great if you know you're going to be fighting a lot of enemies it has helped me be able to get one shots when i didn't have enough damage to do it otherwise especially when i was in the arctic biome fighting wolves and that alone is what makes pickled carrots good the great thing about it is you can stack it with the barbecue carrot as well to give yourself even more projectile damage on top of what you had before. These also will not spoil, but they will consume the glass jar if you make them and eat them. So do keep that in mind if you go ahead and make pickled carrots with your glass jars. The glass jars are gone once consumed. They do not work like the berry jam does. Alrighty, now we need to talk about what I like to call the superfoods. My five superfoods I have for you today are going to be cooked meat because it is the best and easiest way to get health regen instantaneously for a very low amount of effort. Then you have flatbread, which will give us 100% stamina regen as well as 5% experience gain. You have cooked fish because that's going to give us some more stamina regen and is extremely easy to get as well as restores 30 HP instead of 20 like cooked meat does. And you have your berry which we're going to talk about only because of the fact that they're super easy to get. They're all over the map, and all you have to do is eat a single one to get a nice little buff of 50 extra stamina, as well as bread, which is our final superfood today, aside from pumpkin bread. I'm going to tack that one on here at the very end, and the reason bread's good is just for the XP gain. But the reason pumpkin bread is good is because it's the best XP gain item that we have found, and it is very very cheap to make as well as doesn't spoil. So 
those are going to be my superfoods. Now, as far as combo foods go, we're going to talk about a couple different ones. The first combo I have for you is going to be what I like to call the never run out of stamina combo. And that's going to be using one of the two alcoholic beverages, so either beer or wine, your choice for the 100% stamina regeneration as well as 125 stamina max, along with flatbread to make it 200% stamina regeneration and fish curry for a total of 210% stamina regen, 10% health regen, and an increased 225 max HP. This is an extremely powerful combo because it gives you health, stamina, and stamina regen, as well as health regen, all for a low price of just a little bit of glass, some regular animal meat, some flour, which is very easy to get, some soybeans, which are very easy to get, and some raw fish, which is very easy to get. All the ingredients together for all three of these items take very little effort if you already have the crafting benches. It has saved me so much time on some of these missions where you have to run across the entire map because I don't have to stop and wait for stamina every two seconds because I have a massive stamina bar on top of also having very, very fast stamina regeneration. Now, as far as combat goes, I think fish curry is also extremely useful. It is one of the items I would highly recommend you take. And then personally, aside from the fish curry, you're going to want a lot of cooked meat or cooked fish simply because they give you extra HP whenever you eat them. But aside from that, you're going to want to go ahead and get the pickled carrot for the buff of 20% projectile damage and the barbecue carrot for an extra 5%. Now, if you're using guns, I don't actually think this damage translates over. I have not tested that yet. I'm pretty sure it's for bows only or for throwables like knives if you happen to throw them, but 25% increased damage for bows is nothing to scuff at. It can add up quite a bit and save you a lot of time. That means one in four arrows, you're getting a free arrow essentially. So every time you shoot four times, you're basically getting a fifth hit for free. Now, if you're looking to grind out a ton of XP, on the other hand, I recommend a combo of pumpkin bread for 15% XP, regular bread for 10% XP, and going with the crumbed fish fillet for the max stamina, max health, stamina regen, and experience gain of another 10%. If you don't want to go with fish fillet, my secondary option for you is either going to be one of the alcoholic beverages for the stamina regen or the flatbread for this stamina regen, as you still get 5% XP from it, as well as getting your stamina twice as fast. With all that being said, I am Game Advisor. I hope you found some useful information here today. If you want to see more of our Icarus videos, make sure to subscribe or go check them out on our channel. Otherwise, I'm Game Advisor. We make tons of new survival game content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.